welcome to AC Practical 7.1 Series RLC, AC circuits, RLC just means resistance, inductance and capacitances all connected in series. So Dr. Ken here with you once again. So don't forget uh, to do your risk assessment. It's important to identify what the hazards are, supervision level that will be required, or and also the risk class, high, low, medium, and then list what you can put in place to uh, manage those risks. So here's our basic setup. Uh, we have uh, an AC supply at a nominal 24 volts. We've got a ballast inductor at approximately 200 millihenries. We've got a 10 microfarad capacitor and we've got a lamp which will be running a little bit hot to have a little bit of current through it so it's got a resistance of about 80 ohms. So there are our three devices, an inductor, a capacitor and a lamp as a resistor and as you can see if you follow the red wire it's connected to the inductor then to the capacitor and then to the resistor and then back to the supply therefore it is all connected in series so here's this actual circuit diagram of uh, what we'll be doing and here's our power supply we'll be using my digital voltmeter or multimeter on volts to measure the voltage be using my clip-on ammeter here to measure the current and of course the current is relatively low I've actually looped through here three times which means we just have to divide the current reading by three um, we have our resistor oh, I've put 15 ohms there but that's its cold temperature it's going to be running at about 80 ohms when we've got some current running through it. Our 200 millihenries of inductance, it has an internal resistance, we just I measured with an ohm meter of about 54 ohms. And then finally our capacitor at 10 microfarads. Also in the circuit today is a 1 ohm resistor and that is just as you probably remember from lots of our other Prax, this is a current to voltage transducer. So all this does is convert current into a voltage, which we can then measure on channel 2 on our oscilloscope. So on our oscilloscope, channel 2 will be current, and channel 1 will be the applied voltage. So, with all that information, we can actually uh, do some calculations. And uh, the first thing we can do is we can work out what uh, the inductive reactance is in ohms and simply 2 pi FL. In our case, we get about uh, 622 ohms. Again, uh, your values may come out a little bit different to mine depending on what you're using. The actual Z of the inductor, remembering it's made up of our 622 ohms of inductance and 54 ohms of internal resistance. Therefore, square root of 622 squared plus 54 squared, that's just Pythagoras' theorem, means we've got an internal Z of 625 ohms. And if we work out that ratio, it means that the um, inductor is at an angle of about 82 degrees. Applying the same theory to our capacitor, it's 1 on 2 pi FC. And our capacitor is at about uh, 320 ohms. 
and because it's a capacitor we know it's going to be at a nice neat 90 degrees then finally to work out the entire Z for the circuit we just take the XL and subtract it from the XC and square that and take the internal or the resistance of our lamp and square that, add them together and take the square root so we end up with a circuit impedance of something in the order of about 350 ohms and that's at an angle for the impedance of about 78 degrees so some other things we can do, we've measured the uh, 20 to 28 volts we have and if we take the current and divide it by the impedance we should end up reading something in the order of about 80 milliamps for our circuit. If we multiply the current through the resistor we should end up with something around about 6.4 volts. And for our capacitor, again, multiply the XC by the current, you get about 25.6. And uh, here's a surprising one, if you multiply the current by the XL, you actually end up with a voltage greater than the supply across the inductor. So that'll be interesting to see whether this one actually turns out. So let's have a look now at our readings. So I've set up the circuit. I'll just change the, uh, the pen. And here you can see we're measuring the current. And if you look carefully, we're measuring about um, 230 to 240 milliamps on our display. Remember, we have to divide that by three. So, because we have the three wires wrapped around through the thing to bring our reading up. So, our 240 divided by three giving us 800 milliamps, which is very close to what we thought we would get. Our voltage is actually running at... Um, 27.6 so that's where that value comes from and as we've just said the current value is coming from there the next thing that we need to measure is the inductance voltage and the inductance voltage is at 48.6 so there's the inductor voltage 48.6 we said it would be something close to 50 and we were right it's quite high then the voltage across the capacitor so you can see here the voltage is being measured across the capacitor and we're getting about 23.44 so that's where that value is coming from and then finally our voltage drop across our resistor is at uh, 5.556 volts and we've put that into our table. So there's, there's our three voltages. Sorry, our four voltages. So we've got um, the volts across the supply, the volts across the inductor, the volts across the capacitor, and the voltage across the resistor. So again, because this is a reactive circuit, you can't just add up all those voltages algebraically. Obviously, they would never equal 27 volts, especially since it's across the inductor we have 48 volts. So we can't just do a nice simple addition. So let's move on to the next slide now that we've got all our values and uh, let's do a quick comparison. So again, I'll just turn the pen on and uh, our voltage is in this column. We, uh, we thought we would get 28, well we've got 27.6 so reasonably close there. Um, we thought we would uh, get um, 80 milliamps and we did get 80 milliamps or very very close to it and then we calculated for the voltage across the resistor we would get uh, something in the order of 6.4 and we got 5.66 so that's quite close very close to that only 0.8 of a volt out in the scheme of the things of uh, other resistances in the circuit that we didn't account for like our one ohm resistor um, we're probably very very close to spot on there uh, then our voltage across the capacitor um, again 
close. 25.6 is what we thought we would get, and we got 23.44. So again, allowing for inaccuracies in our meters, that's very close. And then finally, our voltage across the inductor. Uh, we estimated we would get 50, and we actually got 48.66. So again, uh, very, very close. So let's put this all now on a uh, on a phaser diagram, and I'll just change my pointer. There we go. And uh, of the purple one is our reference, which would have been at uh, 80 odd milliamps. I didn't bother putting the value on there. It's just the reference in a series circuit, of course. And our first phaser to go on is the voltage across the resistance at 5.5 volts. So that's of course drawn to scale and now we add our voltage across our inductor. So here's the voltage across the inductor at uh, 48.6 volts at our 82 degrees. If you remember that was at uh, 82 degrees so we have to allow our 82 in here and I'll just draw that in so it's really clear. So that's that angle in here of 82 degrees. Then we have to add our voltage across the capacitor. So there's our 23 point uh, odd volts at 90 degrees. You can see here, 90 degrees the opposite direction to our 40, or 82 degrees I should say, for our inductive voltage. So our voltage across our capacitor is at 23 degrees. So our next uh, step is to add these phases together. So I'm going to do that by adding the green phaser to the blue phaser. So I've just, um, I've effectively just picked up and top to tailed the 90 degree phase because it's nice and easy. I don't have to do any particular mucking around. So I've simply tipped and tailed my green phaser into here, and it's given me that point there. The result is the orange phaser, so there's the, that's the result. So, volts across the um, inductor added to volts across the capacitor, and that's the orange one. Now we have to add the red phase, the voltage across our resistance. So we move in and you can see, again, I've just done a tip to tail because it was nice and easy. And I've picked up the red phase and I've tipped to tail. Up here. I've changed its color just so you can tell the difference, turned it into a pink color. And I have now got this final point here. So if I was to now close that across there, that would be our voltage total. And here we have it on the last slide, our voltage total. Is the black phaser at uh, 27.6 volts. And this angle in here is the final angle for the voltage in the circuit. And uh, if you were to go over to the oscilloscope, uh, the way I got that angle, it was simply to find the difference here, and that was uh, 1.5 divisions. And the total number of divisions across the entire wave was 10 from here to here. This is 10 divisions, so simply 1.5 divided by 10, and I just simply multiplied that ratio. I didn't bother to work it back out into milliseconds because I'd get the same ratio, and multiplied that by 360 degrees, and we get the answer of 54 
degrees. So this is at 54 degrees and it looks like it's pretty close to 54 degrees. So our complete answer for the voltage applied to this circuit is 27.6 volts at 54 degrees. So what are some of the conclusions we can draw from R, L and C in series? Firstly, you can get quite large and distinct voltages across the active components. In this case, our inductor got well above the supply voltage, almost uh, well over twice the supply voltage. You can't just add the voltages up in an RLC series circuit. You have to actually add them using a phasor diagram like we did. And by adding them together, we're uh, allowing for both their magnitudes and their angles. So we're able to add up complex quantities using phasor diagrams. And as you can see on our diagram here, we got to the appropriate result as confirmed by our measurements. So I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, Practical 7.1, R, L, and C in series.